All right. I'll say it. But I'm only going to say this once. So whatever sick thrill you're going to get, get it now. Do you like jazz? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Regrowth. Yep. This is the second take of this, so there is a little bit more to go through than just what I did between episodes. But, first of all, between episodes, all I did was lay out this nice little grassy knoll and run over Applied Energistics Cable to it. And I have been experimenting with staves and with spell foci. I have the Elementium Kissed Dreamwood Staff, which turns out to recharge at the same rate and mana cost as the Batania, as, as the Wand. And it's the only difference is it holds 250 of each V and it's slightly useful as a weapon. So that's mediocre. What I decided on and what I'm using is the Alchemically Crowned Blood Staff. This thing is a little bit of a production make. You need to make these two blood rods, and that requires tons of alchemy, and... But... The trick of it is that it uses a blood to recharge its V, naturally. And this blood staff is kind of a specialist thing. It only holds 50 of each V, but it recharges very, very fast. So if I take this lovely fire focus with potency 5, you see it drains Ignis very, very fast. But, the moment I stop, it's pretty much going to fill up in a couple of seconds. And the rate that it's sucking blood down is much less than the Well of Suffering is generating. So I basically have free magic forever. And the whole point of a staff is... You can only use it to cast spells. You can't use it for crafting. It's only for your own personal use. So the 50V limit doesn't really matter because you're only going to use bulk amounts of V when you are crafting. So this ended up being a very good investment. And I have the, the Dreamwood one as a backup. So, bees. Yep, I've been, I've been putting this off. As you can see, I have a fairly standard setup here, uh, wireless signal, terminals, and I have a couple of chests. Uh, these are max size chests, single chests that big. These things are uh, for holding our bees. I have these storage buses here with fuzzy cards, which allow it to ignore NBT and metadata. And I'm just going to program it up with whatever types of bees it has, and they will end up in here, because these are both... Of course, very high priority. Finally, I built this little assembly of centrifuges. I did this on camera, but just didn't record. These centrifuges are fairly easy to... Oh yes, the other thing. The other thing that I use those centrifuges with is on camera again. I made myself this mana steel scoop. It's very simple. This is a tool for dealing with those beehives that you sometimes find sitting around out in the world. Let me see if I can track one down real quick. Ah, yeah, there's one. Yes. If you try and kill these things with a pickaxe, it's very, very slow. And Sir Reginald, by the way, I, I ground those reward bags over at the Bloody Temple in Abyssal Mausoleum, and I got a bunch of creative tool modifiers. So Sir Reginald is now indestructible and very, very fast. Mining speed, 41. Instantly mines most things. Beehives, still slow. But a scoop is the tool for it. So when you use a scoop on a beehive, you will always get a princess and a drone, but you will sometimes also get honeycomb. And this honeycomb, again on camera, I used for our first quest. Yes, I used to make this bee house that it wanted. Yep, 
You see it's just some wood and a honeycomb. And that unlocked the last quest in Enables. The last quest turned out to be Centrifuges. So what the world enables is officially done. Yes, I built a bunch of centrifuges because they are very slow machines that cannot be sped up. I have here just a piping assembly. Um, that pipe in the center goes underground, links up to our logistical sorter here. Those pipes on the front are all just leading to the ME interface, which of course is on the network. And you just feed it honeycomb. And let's see if I can find which one it went to. There it is. Yes, you see how slow it is. And that will generate beeswax and honey drops. And that is how centrifuges work. So, the next quest in encoding is for us to build either an apiary or to build these hives. You see, we can get these modest hives with a little bit of rune crafting. I just need to get some more drones together. But, well, you see that's going to take more than what we would expect to find out in the wild. So what would be the point of it? Well, the point of it is we can use those modest hives to make all the other hives that you would normally find in world gen. They would be rather difficult to track down in our current situation. So, yes, you see, even though these princesses have different uh, metadata, they have different genetics, they still end up in this storage crate because of their fuzzy card. Very convenient. But yes, those tropical and meadows and other hives I can get through mana. So that is the other that is one thing. The other thing is I am going to need to make a proper apiary. Now, that is more or less all the same stuff, but it's going to require this impregnated casing. And that is going to be a carpenter loaded up with seed oil. To make seed oil, we need to make a squeezer. You see, it's a fairly simple craft. I'm actually going to make a, a pattern for it real quick. Now, again, like centrifuges, like every other forestry machine, really, squeezers are very, very slow and they cannot be sped up. So we are going to want to massively parallelize this. I'm going to want, say, 10 of them. And we already have some seeds for them to get seed oil out of over in our pumpkin, over in our pumpkin patch. Yes, you remember how I had enough pumpkins to make a singularity? Well, I have enough pumpkins to make a decent amount of seed oil. All I'm going to do is put the auto assembler on here, give it a pumpkin, and tell it to go. Next, I'm going to put the squeezers, say, No, I don't want them like that. Because it's going to need power as well. Yeah, how about like that? And we can run the liquid output down the center. Okay. So then I'm just going to need the logistical transporters. I'm going to need power cables. And I am going to need mechanical pipes. F 
first of all, let's run the seeds out this way. I don't need to put this on a logistical sorter or anything. This is just bulk production into bulk output. Configure it to pull. There we go. These squeezers will start filling up with vast amounts of seeds. And they are so slow that they should all be kept fed once I have reached, for lack of a better word, pressurization. Next, underground. Gonna run some power cable. I can just run that right from there. That's convenient. It's actually... Sir Reginald is maybe a little bit too fast now. You have to be very careful. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then once I set all those pipes to pull... Yeah, you see? They're already starting to fill a little bit. Okay. Just need to backfill this entire area. Yes, I'm working to make apiaries right away because bee houses suck. They are not compatible with pipes. In fact, they're specifically designed not to be compatible with pipes. They take no upgrades, and if you're going to do bees, you want the upgrades. And I think they actually even slow the bees down. So, while bee houses are very cheap, you don't want to use them. Yeah, see? Squeezers are filling up just fine. Okay, I'm going to make a buffer tank for it to store just a crap ton of seed oil. And for that, I think I'm actually going to make something a little bit special. These Sanguimancy blood tanks. These are interesting upgradable tanks. See? You start with just tier 1 with some simple slates and glass and stuff, and that's fine. It holds 16 buckets. But you upgrade them using more and more and more of the tier 1. Well, actually, no. Those tier 1s require blank slates, and that's actually kind of... That would actually be kind of tough, because that requires living rock in this pack. So never mind. I'm just going to have a railcraft tank. We'll make this underground, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I don't even need the hammer anymore. Not for this. And I'll leave that as space underground. There we go. Formed up. Holds 1,600 buckets. Okay. Maybe I should disconnect that steam engine. Eh, it's nice as, as a reminder of where I've come from. Okay. Eh, maybe I should have left it a little bit open. Okay, there we are. Now I just need a carpenter or two. Uh, 
And I'm just going to put the one on for the moment, but I think there are actually a couple of recipes that use seed oil. Let's see here. Yeah, it can be used for those stamps, which I think are used for sending items to other players, like from anywhere and across dimensions. This Esquitois, which is used for some sort of bee research mechanic that I don't know much about. More stamps. Impregnated sticks. Those are used for... Yeah, those impregnated frames. Those are really good. Those are upgrades for bees. Proven gear, huh? Lumber mill, woodworker. Okay, um... That's nice. Yeah, and it's it's kind of the basis for a bunch of other upgrades. Um, okay. Anyway, let's run over power. Zalvia. Now all I need to do is program it with some wood. And there we are. Impregnated casings. Excellent. Was that actually part of the quest, or is it just... No, it's, it just wants me to make the apiaries. Okay. Apiaries. These are proper bee homes. Full speed, takes upgrades, can be automated. So... I built this grassy area because bees usually require fairly specific biomes in order to work, and grass is kind of like a, a natural biome display. So let's start by putting a bee house down over here. Now, to make bees work, you need a princess and a drone. You put them in together, they will mate. Look at that sexy, sexy mating action. And you get a queen. And of course, the queen's genetics will be a cross of the princesses and the drones. That's how you crossbreed, as you, you have different princesses and drones. Oh no, there's the problem. Uh, they require flowers in order to, to eat. Well... I have some flowers and storage. You can just put that right here. She should detect that after a moment. No flowers. Uh, okay. I guess they must have a flower preference. So let's make something to help me figure out bees better. I need a bee-elizer. Get my NEI back. That's just a carpenter recipe with water. Well, okay, I can make another carpenter. Just gonna put this back in the area here. And this carpenter obviously isn't going to be really automated. It's just going to be for personal use. Oops, I forgot the tin. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. Be Elizer Crafting. Be Elizer. That should be. Oh, that's after the the hive quest. Okay. Well, that would be a, tr a retrieval quest anyway, so I'm good. So, to use the Be Elizer, I need honey drops. Or do I need honey dew? I forget. Supply uh, bee and honey, or honeydew. Okay, so I've got those honey drops. That is fuel for the bee elizer. The bees will eat that to stay calm while I do science to them. So, ah, okay. So here are all the stats of the bee that we see here. Uh, she's got a short lifespan, which is actually a good thing for breeding. Uh, slow production. Yeah. And these use a kind of Mendelian gene. So she has active genes and, and recessive genes that are only used for breeding that may activate later. And she, she has, like, you know, copies and stuff like that. So you, you could have an inactive thing like... It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, so, she needs a cactus nearby. Okay. And out of curiosity, let's check that other princess and see if she has better genes. Uh, hmm. Well, now that I've bealized them, Let's see here. Short life, slower worker, short life, slower worker. They look kind of identical, at least for the important stats. And yes, yeah, see, she ends up back there. So I need a little bit of sand and a little bit of cactus. I don't have a little bit of proper cactus. I can make some. Yes, just a little bit of slime in the alchemical pool. I could also run over to my witchery area where I have some of this growing. There we go. Now she should be happy about flowers. What's the next thing she's going to complain about? You, you have a cactus. You have a cactus right here. There we go. Okay. And actually, she's not complaining. I, I guess that this environment suits her fine. Okay. Now. She is going to gradually live out her life, making a nice little hive of bees. If you look closely at these particles, they are actually tiny bees flying around, being happy and productive. And over her lifetime, which is now the breeding bar, so this is going to tick down very, very slowly over time. At the end of her life, she will breed, and I will get a new princess and a couple of drones. Uh, princesses are what you have to hunt for. They are the limited resource. There are ways to get more of them, of course. But they are, they are kind of going to be your limiting factor until the, uh, the end game of bees, as it were. Anyway, her life is going to last a fricky fricky long time. To shorten her life so that she breathes sooner and I get more drones, which I'm going to need more drones for that for that breeding thing. I could go hunting more hives, but I don't feel like it. To shorten her life, I'm going to have to make some frames. For that, I'm going to need another carpenter. Over here on the seed oil line.
in order to make is it three <sighs> impregnated sticks oh it's two logs okay Yes, yeah, so you can see I'm actually running a bit low on wood. It's okay. We will just make tons of these impregnated sticks because we need them for these base frames, which the one we're going to want is chocolate frames. Okay, each of these frames have different effects, like the healing frame will make them live longer, which you want when you have bees that are just producing honeycombs because they only produce honeycombs while they're still alive. Uh, this base frame will, will just kind of increase their life and productivity a little bit. The chocolate frame, though, that's what we want for breeding. That'll make them live a shorter life. And there's also a bunch of other ones like, I'm, I'm, I think this restraint frame will prevent mutation. Uh, soul frame will increase it and decrease their life, maybe? I don't know. Those are all special frames from magical bees that I need to read up about. And I haven't done much research into magical bees yet. Yes, I have these magic frames, but you see that doesn't explain very much. And of course, for just baseline, there's this untreated frame. But that's really not useful for much, except as a crafting ingredient of that. Yes. There we are, chocolate frames. These just go into these three slots here. And note that frames do degrade over time. But yes, with those three chocolate frames, the princess should be decaying much faster. And now we wait. And this is the really crappy part of bees. They are so slow. Yeah, it's been about, I don't know, five minutes. And that's how much she decayed by in that time. Rather silly of me not to notice, we have a quest to make those untreated frames. Zazay, ah, oh, we're out of string. Easy fix. Yes, these things are kind of useless. Ah, it gave us a bunch of proven frames. Okay, so these base frames, I told you, they add a little lifespan and productivity to the bees. Um... The untreateds work the worst, the treated ones work a little bit better, and they last a little bit longer. And these proven frames, which in a normal game you can only get by trading with villagers, and we don't have any villagers to trade with right now, these proven frames last the longest and give the most. Almost. I guess that while this is going, I'll complete the other quest. So, I need to make a fish feeder. Ah. Yes, for that I'm going to need this woven wicker, which is easy enough. And I'm actually going to need to catch some fish. And I'm just going to dig a fishing hole back here. Might as well make this the genetics area. Here's a nice little pond. That's a, that's a convenient thing. Hmm. 
you know, just kind of fill in the natural features and put them to use. There we go. Nice little natural pond. And the fish feeder. So, Mariculture fish tanks are a little bit weird. They are... Okay, you, you just put this fish feeder next to any pond of water, I think. And that should link up to it. And it needs food, it needs a male fish, it needs a female fish, yeah. it's. But that should be reading this whole pond here as being what it's linking to. And if I put fish in there, they should breed. Anyway, was that the quest? No, it wants also fish meal. That's easy. I just need to catch a fish and smash it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, and it wants to make some upgrades for it. So, you put fish meal into here, and that'll... That should make food. Hmm. I guess it requires fish in there. Or maybe it needs to be sitting in the water. Maybe that's what it needs. No? Okay. Well, let's make that basic cooling upgrade. That's really simple. It's just two of these and some snow. Use these to increase, or we'll use these to decrease the temperature of the water, but there's ones to increase it as well, and fish will have different temperature preferences and stuff like that. And it wants me to actually successfully breed some fish. Okay. For that, I need to catch some live fish. Now, the easiest way to catch live fish is just to fish underwater. So it's a good thing I have that Ring of Odin and my armor giving me infinite water breathing. And that's still raw. You still will probably kill the fish. Maybe this vanilla rod doesn't catch live fish. And let's reduce the variables, the variables a little bit by using mariculture bait. Remember the sifter thing? Yep, gives me that nice grasshopper bait. There we go. A living male minnow. Living cod. This is why I hate fishing. Hey, female cod. Okay. So we have a breeding pair now. If I put these both in the fish thing... Okay, these are unhappy because it is too hot. Too hot by far. That's what these upgrades are for. Now, this basic cooling, only one degree. And it's too hot by 20. So yeah, they need a little bit more love than that. Let's make a void chest here. I don't think fish breeding is something I'm really going to do, so... Uh, sorry, I'll... Well, I might as well do the other thing. If you have a live fish that you don't want, you can kill it just by tossing it onto the ground. You see that water particle that came up out of it? Yep, it died. And now that it's dead, we can smash it into the fish paste. Which we feed to their to their previous associates. Ain't life grand. Okay, so upgrade that basic to a standard. And that standard to an advanced. Gonna need more wood. Uh, 
And that's going to need ice. So, how do I get ice? Could do it with the snowball by alchemy. Could... I could just do snow. Okay. Okay, there's advanced. Ends in the ultimate. Full 14 degrees. Now, even though the fish are over their preferred temperature by 20, and, and yes, you can see them swimming around in there now, but even though this won't get them all the way there, hopefully they, they have a little bit of a tolerance, so hopefully this will be enough. Still too hot. Eh. I guess they don't have that much tolerance. Okay. Have to make another cooling thing. And by the way, just for the moment, I'm sourcing my snow from this uh, conjuration catalyst, which is the other thing you can put under a mana pool. Well, it's the second of three things. The third thing I don't really count. It's a mana void. It just makes the mana pool void excess mana. Anyway, this conjuration thing will duplicate certain items. Not all of them, of course. But things like snow, redstone, glowstone... And of course I got a, uh, a base... Um, a seed amount of snow from snowbells. You can also get them by putting a water source next to pure daisies. Although obviously you have to either make a floating pure daisy or build an enclosure so that the water will not uproot it. Okay, so can they take one degree Celsius difference? No, they can't. Well, screw it. I'm going to make it too cold for him now. Just out of spite. No, no, I won't. I'll give the perfect environment. There, see? Now, just like the bees, they will live their life, and they will gradually tick down, and every time these bubbles fill up, they have a chance of making product for us, and they will gradually eat the food. Now, these guys, I think, don't really give anything special. Yeah, they they give a chance of, of molten ice. I think that's called water, but... Eh. They basically give us a thing that allows us to craft ice and a thing that allows us to craft dirt. Yeah. See, it would give us this liquid in the vat, and we could combine it with that to make clay, and we could put it in the block caster to make dirt, and yeah. <sighs> so, once their HP wears down, and I don't think there's any way to speed it up, I just have to wait. They will give me some eggs, and with those eggs, I will be able to have the next quest.